You are looking live at Launchpad 6, Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where a Soyuz 2.1A rocket stands ready to launch an unpiloted Russian resupply cargo spacecraft carrying almost three tons of food, fuel, and supplies to the International Space Station. Good evening from Mission Control Houston in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where we're bringing you live coverage this evening of the launch of the Russian Progress 80 cargo spacecraft, set to lift off at 10.25 and 39 seconds p.m. Central Time. That's 11.25 and 39 seconds p.m. Eastern Time on a two-day 34-orbit journey to the International Space Station where it will automatically dock to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the station's Russian segment, Thursday, February 17th at 1.06 a.m. Central Time, 2.06 a.m. Eastern. The Progress 80 cargo spacecraft is filled with about three tons of cargo, the breakdown on that cargo is 3,704 pounds of dry goods and spare parts, 948 pounds of propellant, 926 pounds of water, 89 pounds of nitrogen for a total of 5,667 pounds being carried to the International Space Station. On Saturday, the Progress spacecraft was transported to the launch pad from its processing hangar. The railroad car hauled the Progress vehicle about a quarter of a mile away to launch site 31, where it was hydraulically lifted to its vertical position, where technicians began the process of hooking up fuel lines and power lines for the final stage of the processing that will lead to this evening's launch. Now, coming up on 22 minutes until liftoff. And back in Baikonur, the temperature is 15 degrees Fahrenheit with partly cloudy skies. The 2.1A booster was fully fueled several hours ago and all of the propellants are being replenished now as we are in the final minutes of countdown. Again, that will lead to a launch at 10, 25 and 39 seconds p.m. Central Time, 11, 25 and 39 seconds p.m. Eastern Time, which will be 9, 25 and 39 seconds a.m. on February 15th at the launch site in Baikonur. The flight today, as it always is for a Russian Progress or Soyuz vehicle, will be controlled once it reaches its preliminary orbit by flight controllers in the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Koryov on the outskirts of Moscow. The flight control team there has been on console throughout the day monitoring all the preparations at the launch site. 
and back here in Mission Control Houston, the International Space Station Flight Control Room. The team of flight controllers here has been on console this evening working in tandem with the Russian flight control teams. And currently living and working aboard the International Space Station is a crew of seven. From left to right are NASA astronauts Raja Chari and Thomas Marshburn, European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer, Roscosmos, Cosmonauts in, Roscosmos cosmonaut and station commander Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov of Roscosmos, and NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Mark Vandehei. Vandehei is on a record-breaking mission and has been living and working aboard the International Space Station since April 9th, 2021. He's on his way to surpassing Christina Cook's 328-day mission on March 3rd and Scott Kelly's 340-day mission on March 15th. Vandehei is set to return to Earth on March 30th. He will set a NASA astronaut record-breaking 355 consecutive days in orbit. Now coming up on 17 minutes away from launch today and all of the preparations are still running smoothly for an on-time launch at 10.25 and 39 seconds p.m. Central Time. With the way orbital mechanics work, the launch time for any vehicle to reach the International Space Station is selected at the moment the Earth's rotation carries the launch site into the plane or corridor of the orbit of the International Space Station, which is inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. That's the way the phase angle and the launch time are calculated to bring progress to its two-day 34 orbit rendezvous. It will, again, it will deliver about three tons of cargo to the International Space Station.
now just under 14 minutes from launch today, and flight controllers are still reporting everything is running smoothly for an on-time launch today. The Progress is launching atop a Soyuz 2.1A booster, which is a three-stage rocket. The first stage, with its liquid fuel engines and strap-on boosters, will burn for about 1 minute and 57 seconds before the strap-on boosters are jettisoned and the first stage separates. That'll be followed about a minute later by the jettisoning of the launch shroud. The second stage engine will burn for about two and a half minutes to continue propelling the Progress toward its preliminary orbit. The second stage will occur at the 4 minute and 47 second mark, followed by third stage, which will burn for a little over 4 minutes until it's shut down at 8 minutes and 45 seconds after launch, followed just seconds later by the Progress's separation from the third stage and initiation of the solar arrays and navigational antennas to deploy. After that third stage separation, Progress 80 will be put into its preliminary orbit to begin its 34 orbit journey, arriving to the International Space Station on Thursday, where it will automatically dock to the Poisk module on the space facing side of the station's Russian segment at 106 a.m. Central Time, 206 a.m. Eastern Time. Coming up on 12 minutes until liftoff, at the time of launch this evening, the International Space Station will be flying 260 statute miles over, over Central Africa. The seven crew members aboard the International Space Station at this hour are asleep, but of course will be awake at the time of docking on Thursday. Pyotr Dubrov and Anton Shkaplerov of Roscosmos will be inside the Zvezda service module at a control panel called the Taru system, the tel telerobotically operated rendezvous system, and would be prepared to operate a joystick in the unlikely event that a problem would occur with the automated rendezvous system.
Just under 10 minutes to lift off now and back in Baikonur again. The temperature is 15 degrees Fahrenheit with partly cloudy skies. Again, that 2.1A booster was fully fueled several hours ago. So right now all of the propellants are being replenished as we're in the final minutes of countdown. Again, that launch time coming at 1025 and 39 seconds p.m. Central Time. 11.25 and 39 seconds p.m. Eastern Time, which will be 9.25 and 39 seconds a.m. on February 15th back at the launch site. Eight minutes to lift off and flight controllers are still reporting everything is running smoothly for an on-time launch today. The countdown will soon move into its automated phase that will include the purging of nitrogen from the first stage engines, the propellant drain back to make sure that the first stage of the Soyuz has the correct amount of propellant for its first two minutes of flight, and then the booster propellant tank will pressurize will, and that will follow and the ground propellant feed will then be terminated. Again, coming up on some of the final milestones before liftoff. Six and a half minutes until launch and the countdown is still proceeding on track.
coming up on four and a half minutes from launch and controllers back at the blockhouse in Baikonur are reporting a purge of nitrogen for the first stage. So the fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines are purged with nitrogen to proof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. That first stage will be pressurized at about the two minute 45 second mark before launch. The pressurization of the first stage fuel tanks will optimize the pressure of fuel, helping the structural support of the rocket as it sits on the launch pad. Again, you're getting a live look now from launch site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The progress running through final procedures, ready to begin its two-day 34-orbit journey to deliver about three tons of cargo to the International Space Station. Coming up on the three minute mark before launch, once we hit that three minute mark, propellant drain back will begin. And the booster tank is now being pressurized for flight. Again, that pressurization optimizes the flow of fuel and helps add structural support to the rocket. Coming up on the one minute mark to lift off, at this point the ground propellant feed has been terminated. Now under one minute to lift off, the Soyuz rocket is now on internal power. The first umbilical tower has separated from the booster. T minus 20 seconds and counting. The auto sequence has been initiated. The launch command has been issued. The second umbilical tower is now separating. And liftoff. Liftoff of Progress 80, the next vehicle in the supply chain to the International Space Station.
Good vehicle stabilization reported. Good chamber pressure reported on the first stage. One minute and 17 seconds into flight and everything is r reported to be going by the book. Good structural parameters reported from the launch engineers in Baikonur. One minute and 40 seconds into the flight and everything is reported to be going well. Standing by now for first stage separation. First stage separation is confirmed. The four strap-on boosters have completed their job and dropped away at 29 miles in altitude. That second stage engine is up and burning. This will be about a two minute and 39 second stage performance. And flight controllers are reporting everything operating nominally. The Soyuz booster is now traveling almost 5,000 miles per hour. And confirmation of launch shroud jettison. The rocket's altitude now about 49 miles high, traveling at a speed of 5,203 miles per hour. The view you're getting now from a balcony camera in Mission Control Moscow. Four minutes into flight and all of the vehicle parameters are reported to be nominal. Coming up on the four and a half minute mark into flight, now getting our first view from progress, standing by now for second stage shutdown and second stage separation. And we have second stage shutdown and separation confirmed. The third stage engine is up and running and everything is looking good, now traveling just over 9,500 miles per hour and 100 miles in altitude.
Five and a half minutes into flight, good third stage engine performance is being reported. Coming up on the six minute mark into flight, the third stage performance continues to be solid, propelling the Progress 80 cargo craft into its preliminary orbit. Six minutes and 30 seconds into flight, third stage engine is still burning nominally as progress heads toward its preliminary orbit on its journey to the International Space Station, delivering about three tons of cargo. And now just about two minutes of powered flight remaining. The view, <clears throat> the view you're getting now is from the upper stage of the Soyuz booster, coming up on 7 minutes and 30 seconds into flight. Just over seven and a half minutes into flight, the Progress, now traveling 14,000 miles per hour, 124 miles in altitude. That trajectory is flattening out about one minute of powered flight remaining. Now at the eight minute mark into flight, progress now traveling almost 15,000 miles per hour and 125 miles in altitude. All structural parameters are still reported to be nominal. And we're standing by now for third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. Third stage, third stage shutdown confirmed and spacecraft separation confirmed. The next step will be the deployment of the solar arrays and navigational antennas on Progress 80. And getting reports now from the Mission Control Center and Korolyov that the solar arrays and antennas have deployed. So the Progress 80 resupply spacecraft is now officially in its preliminary orbit, which begins its two-day journey to the International Space Station to deliver about three tons of cargo. So liftoff occurred today on time at 1025 and 39 seconds central time. And we're now getting our first view from an external camera on the Progress 80. This is the first test of the telemetry, telemetry stream that you see on your screen now from the Progress 80 back to the control center in Korolyov where the Russian flight controllers will now begin their work to follow the journey of Progress 80 all the way to the International Space Station.
Recapping the milestones from today, liftoff occurred on time at 10.25 and 39 seconds p.m. Central Time, which was 9.25 and 39 seconds a.m. on February 15th back at the launch site in Baikonur. The Soyuz 2.1A booster lifted off from Site 31 in Baikonur and performed a series of three nominal burns to propel the Progress into its preliminary orbit where it is now. So Progress 80 is officially on its two-day 34-orbit journey to the International Space Station, where it will dock to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the station's Russian segment, Thursday, February 17th at 1.06 a.m. Central Time, 2.06 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll have live coverage of rendezvous and docking starting at 12.30 a.m. Central, 1.30 a.m. Eastern. Progress 80 will stay docked to the station for the remainder of the year. With Progress 80 safely on its way to the International Space Station, that'll wrap up our coverage for today. You can join NASA as we go forward to the moon and on to Mars. Discover the latest on Earth, the solar system, and beyond with a weekly update in your inbox. You can subscribe at nasa.gov forward slash subscribe. Thanks for joining us today. This is Mission Control Houston.